Now that Bowser's Fury is out of the way, I can focus on Super Mario 3D World. I talked a bit about this game in my last video and I mentioned that the game was really good and it proved to be much more than just an HD version of 3D Land. One thing I failed to mention in my last video is that most people still felt like this wasn't the next big Mario game and thought the Wii U was still missing a sandbox style Mario game or another sequel to Galaxy, despite 3D World being a really good game. After we got Odyssey back in 2017, many people appreciated 3D World more for what it was since we got our big sandbox style Mario game. The Wii U definitely held this game back and not a lot of people played this game. But it has gotten a second shot at life now that it's been ported to the Nintendo Switch. And I gotta say, this port is the best deluxe game they put out. Before this game, I always thought Mario Kart 8 was the best deluxe game. But 3D World is out and I think it's done a lot more. Obviously Bowser's Fury is the big reason why I think this, but 3D World itself has gotten some updates, which I'll go over in a bit. I definitely recommend picking this up if you haven't played it before. It's a solid game with great level design, music, and gameplay. 4 player co-op is chaos, but the fun kind of chaos. I only did 4 player a bit back in the Wii U days, and on the Switch, I only played it with one other person. But no matter how many people you play it with, the game will still be a blast. Anyways, I don't want to make this intro too long, so let's just jump into... Super Mario 3D World! Yeah. Starting off with the story, Mario, Luigi, Blue Toad, and Peach are out for a walk enjoying the night sky filled with a bunch of fireworks. They notice a clear pipe ahead and the pipe is slanted and not usable. Mario and Luigi quickly fixes the pipe using their plumbing skills. Wait, what? They're actually plumbing shit? When's the last time have we seen them do their job? Oh well, doesn't matter. Someone pops out of the pipe and she is known as a Sprixie. And she is one out of the seven princesses of the Sprixie kingdom. She starts panicking and shares her worries through these pictures and we see that Bowser is up to no good. Bowser shows up right after and snatches the Sprixie away and escapes back into the pipe. Mario and the gang just sits there and watch, as usual. Maybe they're in shock that Bowser isn't capturing Peach this time, who knows. Someone had to take her place though, because she's one of the four playable characters this time. Peach heads into the pipe first and the rest follows. This pipe is clearly not taking them underground. They are being warped into the Sprixie kingdom and once they reach there, they are thrown into the world map and their first Sprixie is being held at the castle of the first world. The gang are in a panic and ready to start the adventure. As usual, this is it for the story until the end of the game. You reach the end of the world to face a boss and save a Sprixie, and then on to the next world. The first world is a grassy, tropical looking area, but that doesn't matter. Just like in 3D land, the actual levels you go into don't follow the world map theme most of the time. It's no big deal, but it does make it hard to make sense of this world, you know? So this game, we are going to be collecting green stars. There is a lot of them and some levels will require you to have a certain amount to unlock it. The regular levels will have 3 stars. Enemies on the map will have 1 star. These enemies will be in your way on the map and you'll have to face them off in a battle arena. Usually easy as hell, they're not boss fights, it's just fighting the usual types of enemies you see in the regular levels. Then you got these mystery box houses. They hold a bunch of bite sized challenges that will give you 10 seconds to reach the green star. Most of them are pretty simple and straightforward, but these can be tricky because you gotta get through all the challenges in one shot or you have to start from the very first challenge. It's not too bad when there's only like 5 challenges to beat in a row, these houses will increase the number of challenges as you get farther in the game so be prepared for that. Then you have the Captain Toad levels. These are puzzle type levels and they're not too challenging and not too long. You'll have to use your camera to move around this island and get a better look on some corners so that you can see what you're doing at all times. These will always have five green stars in each. Collect all of them and then you beat the stage. These puzzles were a lot of fun back then and it's cool that he got his own game after this. I'll have to jump back on it one day. This is the world map. This is how you'll travel from level to level. This is a pretty cool map though, because you can walk freely around the levels and you're not locked into the line like in past Mario games. You'll also find some coins and blocks that you can collect, and you can even find some 1-ups too. The worlds themselves look so good too. It's bright and colorful and it's very sparkly. Just look at the water. Even back at the Wii U I thought this game looked great. Although I can't really see the difference between the Wii U and the Switch version. 
But if I had to guess, the Switch version looks and performs better than the Wii U version. You got 8 worlds to complete the main game and you got 3 bonus worlds. The bonus world is where the game starts to get challenging. The main game is pretty easy and not really difficult for me, but the majority of 3D World's levels are still fun to play through. If they weren't fun, I wouldn't have 100% this game already. There are so many levels in 3D World, each level is bringing in a different idea. You can always expect something new coming up from the next level. Of course, you got some of the generic Mario tropes in there like your beach levels, jungle levels, ghost houses, the usual stuff. But still are great levels with some neat mechanics in them. You might even find some familiar contraptions from past Mario games like these flip panels from Super Mario Galaxy or these green arrow panels from 3D Land. How about these rolling hills from New Super Mario Bros. Wii? But 3D World has a lot of new original stuff that makes the game stand out on its own. Like riding a big dino creature named Plessy, kicking exploding soccer balls to destroy stuff, 2D sections that's just using your shadows, clear pipes, lots and lots of clear pipes, block hats that comes in cannons, light bulbs, and coin blocks, catching a ride on the bullet bell train, circus themed courses, stealth like levels, levels that are built for the katsu, with the katsu being the main focus of the game, lots of levels has lots of places for you to climb with the new power up. For example, here at 1-3, called Mount Beanpole, is a vertical stage, and with the cat power up, you can climb this mountain with ease. This is how you play the level without the cat suit, going left and right up the pathway, which is obviously the slow way to do this course. And here is how you play the level with the cat suit on. You could almost reach the top of this course by only jumping and holding forward. With the cat suit, you scratch by pressing Y. Pounce by holding the... Wait, you don't need me telling you this. Pause and click on the guides menu and you'll have all the info there. The claw dive is sick though. Speedrunners really makes use of this. When you cancel your claw dive right before you touch the ground, you'll be able to jump afterwards and keep your momentum from the cat dive. It's a neat trick and is pretty satisfying to pull off. Best place to practice this is the very first level since you have a lot of room to mess around with and lots of super bells in case you lose the power up. Of course we got a bunch of power ups to use in this game. One being fire flower, tanuki leaf and the boomerang flower. All are great for attacking enemies and they each have other uses too. Fire flower can light up torches and reveal hidden stuff nearby. The boomerang flower is great for collecting items out of reach and the tanuki is great for tight platforming sections making it easier to land. Unlike in Bowser's Fury, you can't store multiple items at once. You can only store one item unless you have more players with you. But that's okay, it would definitely make the game 100 times easier. Considering how many power ups the game gives us. The bosses in 3D World are... Uh, easy. Like, every single one of them. And yeah, that's normal for Mario, but like, most of them are not that interesting or fun. The only one that comes to mind is the big blob guy, but that's it. Histocrat and his bitch ass wife are boring. Facing both of them at the same time does nothing. Boom Boom and Poom Poom are easy as shit. This guy's name is a King Kathunk, and he's also easy as shit. The Boulder guy and Prince Bully is neat and different, but still nothing special, and they're still easy. The ones I'd say I'd actually like are the two times you fight Bowser in his pit mobile in World 1 and in World Castle. The first time you see Bowser, he shows off his new pimp ride. And we destroy it. And after going through worlds 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you meet Bowser again at the end of world 7. This time he got Exhibit to pimp his ride. Just look at them lights, dog. My man trying to take out Mario in style. 
With lava all around us this time, lava geysers will rise up from pits and from underneath the semi-solid platform. You also see some of the ground filled with spikes that pop in and out. Bowser himself still does the same two moves, throw soccer balls and spit fire. This one is better than the first fight for sure and can get chaotic with four players. I like it. Once you beat him, he will fall into the lava, defeated by Mario once again. Head to the flagpole to save the last Sprixy and the game is now complete and the credits roll. Okay, it does end. This castle lava world is world 7 and we all know Mario games end on world 8. No less or higher, I think. Is there a Mario game that... Whatever, who cares. Bowser shows up like, I lived bitch, and captures all 7 of the Sprixies in one jar. Damn, I feel bad for the one that we just saved. Literally had 2 minutes of freedom and she's already being forced back into a jar that's even more cluttered with all seven of them in there now. Poor thing, Mario will get you out soon. Bowser flees and a sparkly clear pipe shows up. Back then I was wondering what the final world was gonna look like. We were so used to the lava world themes being the last world, so this was a nice surprise and was exciting to go find out what's coming up next. And without hesitation, we enter the clear pipe and enter this new world. This is what Super Nintendo World should look like. Holy shit, man. This was a nice surprise back then. Changing up the Mario formula a bit, though Final World not being lava, but it's a whole ass theme park. Bowser's been hitting up Dr. Eggman on how to build a theme park. Just look at Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Colors. The levels here offer a good challenge. You have some courses that also follow the theme of the carnival in the sky, and a couple that doesn't follow it. Like this cookie cake world. Before taking on the final level here, you gotta fight two bosses before going in. And it's the same two circus themed bosses you fight earlier in the game. But now they got some new tricks to try to make it harder for you. And it's not that much though. The Motley Boss Blob actually offers a decent challenge, more than the Histocrat. But you know, still pretty easy I think. After those two bosses are finished, then you are ready to take on the Great Tower of Bowser Land. Damn, he's really copying Eggman Land. The intro shows a sick view of the Great Tower, and it looks so sick. This level is about to be sick as fuck. Okay, it's not actually that sick. It's a cool level, but for it to be the final level to beat the main story? Eh, not so great. Past Mario games had better final levels. The first bit is nothing interesting. Just traveling on top of buildings, fighting some fire bros and some bullies. Doesn't take long to reach Bowser too. He shows up before climbing the tower and we see him put on a cat suit. Which was a cool surprise because we almost never see Bowser use the power ups that Mario is always using against him. He turns into Meowser and then the final battle starts. And it's an auto scroller. Why? Why? A very slow auto scroller at that too. And Bowser's attacks are pretty slow. It's like that for the whole battle. Once you reach the halfway point, he uses the double cherry and multiplies himself and a whole lot of Bowsers are everywhere. And this is cool, but it's still an auto scroller. When we get to this part and the music starts to amp up, Bowser and the clones are picking up speed and it got me thinking this shit's finally gonna pick up now. The real final battle is about to start. But it goes back to the slow pace auto scroller and a bunch of Bowsers show up with their slow attacks. Ugh, why? This final battle had so much potential to be so cool, but they just made it an auto-scroller. Ugh, that's a bummer. The second half of the level can get pretty tricky, especially around this area. 
but it's nothing too difficult. As long as you keep the cat suit, then you're fine. You start climbing up these stairs and the Bowser starts tearing it down as they chase you and a whole bunch of them are just popping out attacking. And then Bowser is sitting on top of a giant pow block. It might seem intimidating with all these Bowsers here, but they really don't do anything here. The four Bowsers take turns shooting a single fireball while the one on the pow block just shoots a bunch of blue fireballs continuously and that's it. They're not even attacking you directly, which I think is pretty funny. Hit the block till it sends Bowser packing and then you're good to go. The seven Sprixies are saved and the main game story is complete. But we ain't fully done yet because we got a bunch of more levels to go through. Yes! You'll be able to unlock the Star World to start taking on more difficult stages. And this is where I start to enjoy the game even more. The levels in the previous eight worlds were mostly fun but lack any challenge. Which is fine for a Mario game, but I love when the post game levels start to really amp up on the difficulty to challenge players like myself who loves playing the harder levels. Again, they're not like super hard, but they still offer a decent challenge, especially when you're trying to get those green stars. You can even unlock Rosalina as a playable character in this world. She has a spin jump that acts as a melee attack and a double jump. When you get a power up, she can't use her spin jump though, since both moves are mapped to the same action button. After the Star World, then you got the Mushroom World and the Fire Flower World. And these ones are old levels with new twists in them. Some are hard and some not so hard. Using Mount Beepo as an example again, 1-3 is sunny and you're going straight to the top. Piranha Plants and Cat Goombas are spread around the area and the Remix version has a sunset setting with spinies and spikes spread around. And the goal is to find 5 keys to unlock the warp box something like that is what you'll mostly see in these two worlds once you finish all of them you'll notice this rock with a star stamp and a flag sign on it that means you gotta collect all the green stars in each level that also includes the captain toad levels the enemy battle arenas and the mystery box houses all the stamps in each level and reach the top of the flagpole in every single level Doing all of that will unlock another spaceship to take you to the final secret world. A world to test all of your abilities. One final Captain Toad level, one final Mystery Box House level, and then this final level. Champions Road. Let's talk about the Captain Toad level first. It's not bad, you'll die a couple times maybe, but it's nothing mind blowing. They could have done something harder, maybe not, who knows, but it's still a cool level. The mystery box house is definitely a challenge, it's a whole ass marathon of mini games, and messing up once means you gotta start all the way back to the beginning. Each challenge on their own isn't hard, but as you get farther and farther into it, it gets more nerve wracking and you'll be so focused to not mess things up as you get closer and closer to the end of the marathon. It's definitely a fun challenge and I wish they could add more stars to it, but maybe it would have been overkill, so I'd say this amount of stars here is fine. Then we got Champions Road, and yeah, this is the hardest Mario level yet. And it's so fun, I love it. It took me many hours to finally have a consistent strategy for each part of the level. The blinker boxes was my first wall. I really couldn't figure out how to get through these sections smoothly. It was so fast and trying to keep up and not fall off was very difficult. These stairs were a bitch man. When the colored boxes started to go by twos, that's when I got super super stumped. Back then I had to abuse Peach's floating ability to get through so I could learn more parts. This part was also a pain. It was hard getting into the rhythm with these swinging spikes. It's easy to lose your footing and take damage or straight up fall off. I wasn't stuck but I definitely died here a lot still. The very last part of the course is definitely the hardest. They said fucking spill the entire ground with dash pads, just to make sure you don't get any time to breathe. Once you step foot on those dash pads, then that's it, you ain't stumping until you clear it. Or die. The first part isn't too bad, but you still have to be very careful when you're making a jump so that you don't land directly on the laser rings. The second part is this whole area, with four different laser rings going off and not being able to see the whole area makes this section a whole bitch. To complete. Honestly, if the camera was zoomed out far enough to see the whole area, 
this section wouldn't be as hard. I would go and grab one key coin and then reset back over here and wait until I believe I can go and grab a coin or two. But overall this level is still challenging, but I can usually beat it in a few tries every time I get back into it. Yeah, fuck you stairs. So of course I couldn't enjoy playing all these levels in 3D World if the gameplay wasn't solid. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, and Rosalina all feel great to control. It's fun to make use of each character's unique abilities. Except for Mario, he's too plain. Come on man, give him something in the next game. Instead of being an all-rounder type, I'm tired of that for Mario. I wanna be Mario and do some cool shit with him, please! Peach is definitely my favorite because of her floating ability. And when she puts on the cat suit, you can get some insane speed. Can't forget this game is a port and it came with a few gameplay tweaks. One change is that the characters are a lot faster, and it's pretty noticeable. Even Peach herself feels fast, and she's the slowest out of all of them. They added a new move from Odyssey which is the dive. This move in 3D World doesn't have as much reach and distance as the Odyssey, but still getting another option to our movement can still change things a lot. Certain areas that were impossible to reach without a cat suit are now possible to reach by doing it like this. Oh yeah. Snapshot mode is here too, just like in Bowser's Fury, but the camera is much more limited. It's still nice though, it's still better than nothing. And just like the stamps in Bowser's Fury, you can use stamps here. This is where you actually unlock all the art too, so make sure you collect all those stamps in the levels and you get more art to use for your pictures. And we got online mode! This new feature got everyone worried though because Nintendo and online don't mix well together. I haven't tried this mode myself yet, but from what I've heard, the mode is pretty functional. If everyone has a good internet and is using the WIRED LAN adapter, then y'all should be fine. They haven't added any new tunes in 3D World. All the new music went into Bowser's Fury. But the music is still really good though. I think this is when Nintendo started to put a lot of jazz into the Mario games. And the stuff they make with the jazz is so good. Just listen here. But it's not all jazz, you got some other really good ones too like Lots of good songs here that still holds up, I think. I'll still catch myself humming to most of these songs because they're just that catchy and addictive. So yeah, that pretty much covers everything. The game is still great, lots of fun levels to play, controls still feel good, Music still jamming and overall the Switch port is worth double dipping to me. It's been a long time since I fully completed 3D World so it was a lot of fun to play it all the way through again. The quality of life changes, the new features and Bowser's Fury alone makes this the best Wii U game ported over to the Switch and I think this game will finally get the attention it deserves after being stuck on a failing console. So if mans haven't played this game yet and you're a Mario fan, then you have no excuses to skip this. Do yourself a favor and pick this game up. At least give it a try, that's all I can really say. It's a good game. Last thing I want to mention is the future. The future of Mario is kind of a blur, because we still don't know when we're getting the next big Mario game. It's been over 3 years now since Odyssey came out, and it will be 4 years later this year in October. And I think we are getting around that time to get an announcement on the next big one. Hell. Breath of the Wild got its announcement of a sequel already, so when's Mario's turn? Even his 2D series has been a mystery. I know Mario Maker has been the highlight over the years, but it's still weird that we haven't gotten a brand new 2D Mario game in over 8 years. 
New Super Mario Bros. U came out in 2012, November. That means 2022 November is when we haven't gotten a new 2D game in over a decade. DECADE! If we don't get something until then, then I don't know. But Mario Maker 2 didn't blow up like the first game, so I have doubts that they are in the works for a third one. But anyways, I should probably talk this in a separate video one day. When it comes to the next 3D Mario, I hope it takes some elements from Bowser's Fury. I really like the idea of one giant world that we can travel to anytime we want and the ability to store traditional power-ups that we can use at any time and anywhere. Combine those with the Mario Odyssey gameplay and then we would have something truly great and new to look forward to. But until then, we gotta wait and see. That's about it with this two part video. I hope y'all can see the improvements as I put out more videos. Despite some issues, I really enjoy making these videos. It's fun to talk about the games I like and just say whatever. Even though I'm barely getting any views, but oh well. This is just a hobby for now, it's something to do while I'm not working during the week. Anyways, please subscribe if you're down to see more, and also like the video since that's important too. This is George, and I hope you guys have a good one, and take care of yourself. Bye.